So I just got back a few minutes ago from watching Interstellar. And it is the greatest movie so far of 2014 by a long shot. I need to caveat that by saying, no, I have not seen Guardians of the Galaxy. But it's just a completely different movie, so I don't see how there's any way Guardians would be better than Interstellar. And I have friends who have seen both, and they say Interstellar blows it out of the water. So, But after getting home, I watched uh, Grace's review, her spoiler review of Interstellar, and it just saddens me when people don't get a movie. They just don't get it. Uh, I, I'll give you some examples. Okay, I'll start with the Matrix trilogy. They were never in the really real world. They were in the Matrix the entire time. If you don't know that, and you didn't get that, I don't understand how you couldn't. I mean, I can sit here and tick off the things in, in, the, in the, the three movies that explain that to you, that basically shove it in your face that they're all still in the Matrix the whole time, but I'm not going to do that here. So there's one example. Um, Inception. They were in his brain the entire time. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll tick off just a couple th things as to why. Every time you see his kids, when they're alive, they're outside the door wearing the same fucking clothes and they're the same age. Yet how many years has he been gone? That's all you need. You don't even have to look at the top at the end spinning. They're, they were in his mind. The, the whole movie was in his mind in the dreamscapes. And then uh, Shutter Island. This is an easier one for people. In Shutter Island, at the very end, Leo DiCaprio's character did not have a relapse. He was just acting like it because he'd rather be lobotomized then live with the memories of what happened and then what he did in response. So those are just a few examples of people not getting a movie because 9 out of 10 people don't know those things about those movies. They just look at the movie and they go, okay, here's the movie. This is what the movie's showing me. Okay. And they just miss the, the, the larger, broader concept of it. And I think that that's going to be the case with Interstellar. People are going to miss the larger, larger, broader, uh, larger, broader concept of the movie. They're just going to go, what the fuck was he doing in, in a black hole in a library shoving books? I don't get it. Who are the aliens? I don't understand. It's so absurd to me. There are other things about the movie that I don't want to say they were absurd, but they were there to move the story along. Um, but yet Nolan did a couple things that I'm happy about. Um, so I just want to talk about those right quick. Uh, first off, they had to have a reason to get off the planet. So, okay, so we can't grow crops and everybody's going to die. Okay, whatever. I don't see that as ever a possibility um, with our science and technology, but... We had to have a reason for this, for this epic space voyage to happen. So I get it. Um, and I want to talk about the character of Michael Caine, uh, or Michael Caine's character in the movie. Uh, because even Grace, in her review, said, oh, he's evil. He's pure evil. Far from it. Um, I, I don't know how you missed this. Uh, maybe you should pay attention when you're watching a movie as a fucking reviewer. But, no, far from it. There was no way anybody on Earth was going to back Plan B. Plan B being just bringing the frozen embryos and restarting the human race somewhere else. There was no way anybody was going to give money or funding or time and research and effort into Plan B if there wasn't a Plan A. If they didn't think that they could get themselves off the planet or get their children off the planet if there wasn't a connection, a direct connection 
And again, it goes into that larger, broader aspect of the movie, the love. The human race, and Michael Caine knew that. His character knew that. There's no way they were going to leave the planet. And he knew that nobody was going to support Plan B if there wasn't a Plan A. So he was far from evil. He was probably the, the, the least evil person in the movie because he was willing to take all that on him to be the bad guy, even though he's far from it, to be the bad guy to save the human race the only way he knows how. So no, not evil, not by a long shot. What I love that Nolan did in this movie is that he didn't make the fucking robots evil or turn evil. Uh, that would have been so easy to do, and I think it was actually a, a plot twist to not have that happen and to have the robots just be badass. Uh, I mean, really. But yet, <laughs> and this is, this is so crazy, uh, when they unzip and it's Matt Damon, I was like, oh, he's going to be evil. Yep, yep, he's going to be evil. You know, they haven't talked about him being in the movie in any of the trailers. You haven't seen it. It hasn't been boasted about that we have Matt Damon, you know, in this movie. So obviously he's going to be evil because I know that everybody's going to look at him as the, the ultimate good guy. And that's great. That's what Nolan wanted. Oh, we're going to look at him as the good guy. And I'm like, nope, he's evil. As soon as they unzipped his ass. Uh, and obviously he was, uh, and I, and I don't give a shit about the speech he gave, um, about any of that where, you know, he had, you know, he thought there's no way that my planet wasn't going to be the planet. You know, I didn't think I was risking anything. You know, it doesn't matter. You're a fucking selfish bastard. And yeah, so, but Anne Hathaway's character, I wanted to strangle like three fucking times. And yes, uh, there needs to be that character in a movie um, to help with the storyline and, and to make there be these, these, these friction moments between the characters um, for, to, have us, to have us as the viewer have something to see that's going on. Um, but I think in real life there's always going to be a character like that. Whether it's a woman or a dude, it doesn't matter to me. Um, she was just an idiot and she got a guy killed and she risked everything uh, because she was pig-headed. So yeah, I want to kill her character. So the scene that the movie's going to lose everybody because everybody just looks at the movie as this is exactly what it's showing me is that scene where you know he's in the black hole and you know then all of a sudden he's in a a, a library, an infinite an infinite library that is his daughter's room. Here's the here's the key, people. Uh, they weren't space aliens, they weren't anything, they were us, however many fucking years in the future, as we have evolved, and they are living in a completely different dimension. You know, you have time and gravity are the other dimensions, and they're existing in one of those. So as the robot, Tards, or whatever his name was, as the robot tells McConaughey in the, in the scene, and I don't know how you miss this, you know, this is their representation for us to be able to understand it. And to elaborate on that, that would mean that our brains in our current uh, state cannot physically uh, be able to observe, observe or interact with this other dimension, this higher dimension. And they were dumbing it down for us so that we could interpret it in some way. And that's what that scene is about. And then again, as McConaughey says, he's dumbing it down to his 10-year-old daughter. You know, he's, he's you know, giving the coordinates for NASA, he's saying stay, and then he puts the data they got from going through the black hole into, you know, Morse code in the watch. So that, she'll be able to figure out the other half of that equation that Michael Caine never could and make, make so that people will live. There is a plan A. So, you know, I, I don't get why people don't see that and a fucking movie reviewer doesn't understand that. Uh, you know, I, 
it, it, this, it's, it sucks because this movie isn't going to do as good as it should um, for how good it is. Uh, you know, a 2001 epic movie, again, probably no, not a lot of people get it. Um, and this will be the same thing. That, that scene, when he goes into the black hole, you know, people are going to be like, well, he should have been torn apart. You know, as he enters the event horizon, he would have been stretched out forever. Well, people, that's all mathematical equations. We haven't sent shit into a black hole. You know, Hawking's thing about black holes that for about 20 years, the entire scientific community said, yep, that's the way it is, completely got fucking rewritten and proved is wrong when we got more data 20 years later. So this is Nolan's interpretation of what we will be like when we advance as a race and be able to help ourselves. So I just don't get why people don't understand these things. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen Interstellar, you need to go see it. Uh, even with all of my spoilers, there is there's no reason to not see this movie. One of the best space movies ever. Ever. So, peace.